The year is 2017, and there's a new anime just released. The story is centred around two companions, a pair of potato-faced adventurers with contrasting personalities and complementary skill sets. Their mission? To journey deep into a desolate and unforgiving environment in order to reach a geographic extreme where no one has set foot before, so that they can gain answers to long-lost questions which could change the very understanding of their world. If it wasn't obvious by now, the vague introduction just given could describe two shows, namely Made in Abyss and Girls Last Tour. It would also give the impression that these shows are very similar, and in some ways they are, but in other, more interesting ways, they're not. I didn't watch these series in 2017, I saw them both much later, and maybe it's the short time span in which I consumed them, or the fact that I adored them both, but I would consider Girls Last Tour and Made in Abyss to be almost perfect accidental companion pieces. And the fact that I've seen this sentiment shared elsewhere in the brief amount of time that I've followed these shows means that I'm not the only one who feels this way. I've already covered both of these shows individually in previous videos, which I will link to in the description, so if you haven't seen those first, I would recommend doing so because I'll be building on some of the themes that I mentioned in those videos previously. And warning, if you haven't watched either Girls Last Tour or Made in Abyss, I will be mentioning spoilers, so go and watch them first. But if you have seen them, or you just don't care about getting spoiled, then I want to take this video to explore these shows, and how two stories which on their surface can seem so similar, can achieve such drastically different tones and messages, and why that makes them complement each other just so well. There's a surprising amount which links Made in Abyss to Girls Last Tour, and while I've listed some of the more surface level similarities in the intro, I think one of the most poignant features is that of the one-way journey. In Made in Abyss, the curse prevents Rico's return to the top. Given her inexperience and the depths to which she and Rake have travelled, it's almost impossible that she would survive the ascent, and in Girls Last Tour, it's… well, it's exactly that, it's their final excursion. In both cases, these conditions give the shows a sense of sad finality, knowing that we can't expect a joyous reunion to cap off the final chapter, and that plays with our expectations of what stories are supposed to do. Seeing characters we care for, small and isolated, feels different without the reassurance that things will end better than this. Knowing that Rico won't get to share her discoveries, that Chi's journal will never be read, creates a specific sense of loneliness which, for the longest time, I didn't think was possible in this medium. It's well documented that the world of Made in Abyss was inspired by video games, particularly those by From Software, which approach world building in a drip feed of incidental information which can be easily missed by the player. That idea of important information which is only accessible to the player character has always struck a chord with me. When I was 9 or 10 this was frustration that other trainers were indifferent when I fielded a legendary Pokemon. I had essentially enslaved a god and nobody seemed to care. More recently though, I've come to appreciate that disconnect. Red Dead Redemption 2 is my favourite gaming experience of the last few years, and as incredible as the story, characters and landscape are, my favourite thing about the game is probably its easter eggs. There's an entire population of robots, vampires, aliens, ghosts and time travellers just waiting to be discovered beneath its surface, which have nothing to do with the main narrative, but serve to demonstrate how much more storied and bizarre the world is beyond the immediate issues of Arthur Morgan. And the fact that we and Arthur have to bear those secrets, not being able to share our discoveries with the other characters means that they will remain a lonely secret between only the player and the player character. Given the differences in the medium, I didn't think that this was something that television could accomplish. But the inevitability of the things that Rico and she document becoming lost knowledge manages to strike that same chord. It's a secret between us and the character, but not that character's world. 
Of course, both shows do this for different reasons. In Maiden Abyss, it's a consequence of the curse, always pushing the heroes downwards and further from the homes that they've left behind. Whereas in Girls' Last Tour, writing a journal which no one is going to read is well in line with the show's stances on defining your own purpose and nothing being permanent. At a deeper and admittedly more vague level, Girls Last Tour and Made in Abyss make an interesting comparison in their approach to questions and their relationship with answers. It's not simply that these shows pose different questions, it's how they use them to further the efforts of the story. In Made in Abyss, the answers to the most pressing questions are important. Where does Reg come from? What happened to Rico's mom? And what waits for them all at the bottom of the abyss? These are questions which the story has made sure that the viewer has a vested interest in seeing answered, and the narrative won't feel completed until satisfying answers are provided. And while these kind of law-based questions do exist in Girls Last Tour, the story doesn't seem to hinge on them nearly as much. Yes, an apocalyptic event has shaped Chia Nui's world, but it's not really as important as sharing a warm meal or listening to the sound of rain with a friend. And yes, they're headed to the highest layer of the city to see what's up there, but they don't really seem to care, and neither does the audience. The questions which really matter in Girls Last Tour are framed by the interactions that Chi and you have with their world and the fleeting moments of beauty which make them pay attention and question why. Why do we want to believe in something bigger than ourselves? What is the value of finding your purpose and what makes life worth living? Of course, these questions are too big to be answered by a TV show, but the answers that it does provide serve more to illuminate the different outlooks that she and you have rather than provide any solid, real truth. Girls Last Tour puts more emphasis on the fact that these questions were asked in the first place. If it simply gets you to think about any of these things, then it's really done its job. And like the questions surrounding its lore, any conclusions that are reached aren't as important as the questions themselves. It's a shame that only the first two thirds of Girls Last Tour were adapted to television, but even though that's the case, the incomplete ending of the anime is not wholly unsatisfying. The final chapter of the manga is sad and sweet, but as brilliant an ending as it is, it largely just develops and solidifies the overarching themes that were developed throughout the story. And yes, of course it did that, because that's what good endings tend to do, but because the narrative of Girls Last Tour was always playing second fiddle to those themes, you can watch the anime and take away the same messages, only with a more open-ended closing. Cheeto and Yuri continue their journey, or don't, they reach the top level, or don't. Either way, the takeaway from the story is still the same. Made in Abyss doesn't have that luxury. Made in Abyss requires closure. Each addition to the story only fuels intrigue among the fans, and the long wait between chapters can be agonising. The call of the Abyss is too strong, and the audience needs answers. In a more ideal world, Made in Abyss might be the story which is already wrapped up, and Girls Last Tour, much like its protagonists, would be the one dragging its feet. And who knows, there's every possibility that Made in Abyss will end on a similar note as Girls Last Tour, but the nature of the story means that knowing that and having those answers will mean more to the overall experience of Made in Abyss. Whereas in Girls Last Tour, it was always about the questions. The difference in how both shows approach that question-answer relationship is reflected in how they deal with their most knowledgeable protagonists. Rico has been largely rewarded for her bookishness. Her knowledge is her strength, it's what she brings to her partnership with Reg, and it's part of what makes her a likeable character. Audiences like studious heroes who commit themselves to learning in order to mitigate physical shortcomings, and Rico with her encyclopedic knowledge of the Abyss is no different. Cheeto is similarly a student of her world, keeping a journal of what she finds and learns on her travels and collecting books in the hope that she can one day preserve their knowledge. She has strong similarities with Rico, and yet Girls Last Tour has a different take on this archetype. Here, that collection of knowledge is found to be largely useless. She isn't exactly punished for her bookishness, but it rarely amounts to much, and in the end, 
The most use her journal can be is fuel for the campfire to keep her and you warm. And again, this is consistent with Girls Last to a stance that having objective answers isn't as valuable as questioning things. This is all to say that with Maiden Abyss, and how it treats its characters, the use of mystery and its world building, and the questions that it wants you to ask, it's all designed to generate intrigue into its fantasy setting. Its questions are all internal, and answers are teased at the bottom of the abyss, so we get pulled deeper with the story. On the other hand, Girls Last Tour's questions are all external. They juxtapose the girls' experiences in a world which has been stripped to its essentials against the apparent abstract nature of our own civilization. In forcing us to question aspects of our own existence, it's using its fantasy setting to generate intrigue in the real world. Which doesn't mean that Made in Abyss doesn't have tough questions, because it does, but they're less philosophical in nature and on more of a gut instinct level. They're experiential, which is really how the show presents most things, by putting us in the character's shoes and making us feel what they feel. That experiential quality of Made in Abyss cannot be overstated. Feeling Rico's vulnerability without Reg, his sense of loss without her, and the elation in their shared victories, it's the driving force behind our investment in these characters and their world. The irony of all of this is that if Girls Last Tour is a show about learning not to overthink or overcomplicate things and appreciating the brief moments of beauty that life can provide, then Made in Abyss is the show that embraces those ideals more centrally. Girls Last Tour is a show about how Yu's outlook is right, but the show itself is much more like Chi, presented in a quiet and contemplative manner. Made in Abyss is much more you speed. It's headstrong, infectious, compelling, and gives us the exact experience of Rico and Reg. It's a show that is rooted in immediacy and compulsion, making you feel more than think, and driving characters and audience alike in the same direction. Where Girls Last Tour ponders, Made in Abyss pounces. We see this in relation to character motivations. Chi and Yu's goals change from episode to episode on a whim. Like with questions and answers in Girls Last Tour, what the end result of your journey looks like isn't important. It was finding your purpose in the first place that really mattered. And in the girls' case, that purpose was for each other. It was their companionship that was the journey. For Made in Abyss, this isn't quite the same. Their goal is clear and unquestionable. To reach the bottom of the abyss is the only measure for success. All the characters seem to agree on this, the only difference that they might have is the cost at which they're willing to attain it. For Rico and Reg, their bond is strong, but that isn't the goal of the story. It's just a vehicle that allows them to strive for that goal. Across both stories, we see the world through different eyes, feel moments through different experiences. Rico and Reg, Chi and you, individual pieces which form a greater whole. That's the nature of companionship, using differences to strengthen rather than divide. Rico's know-how isn't enough to survive without Reg's abilities, but he's too unsure to act without her ambition. Chi might be the one driving them towards their destination, but it's Yu's impulsiveness that makes that journey worth enduring. And in that same way, I feel that Made in Abyss and Girls Last Tour complement each other perfectly. Internal intrigue and external, action and contemplation, feeling and thinking. These shows may share similarities, but it is the differences which make them so interesting. How stories with premises so alike can elicit such different emotional reactions speaks to the individuality of each piece of art and the intent behind it, and how poignant those brief moments of brilliance can be. And while these shows weren't made to be compared, and can so easily be enjoyed on their own individual merits, it's the comparison between the two that helps to highlight where each one excels, elevates our appreciation of both, and can lead to a more rewarding experience. 
And that's why I feel these shows work so well together. Most of us fall on one side or the other. We either tend towards feeling or thinking without always having the time or the mind frame to comprehend both. So the next time you find yourself wrapped up in a good story or caught in the swell of excitement, experience it, feel it and live it to its fullest. But afterwards, once it's passed, make some time to reflect and appreciate the moment, no matter how fleeting it might be. Thanks for watching and thanks to anyone who's watched all three of these uh, Made in Abyss Girls last tour videos. They were supposed to be a single 10 minute comparison, but as soon as I put pen to paper, that has obviously spiraled out into something much bigger, which I don't mind, I think was worth doing to talk about the things I wanted to talk about, but means more work um, has to be put into it. So again, I just appreciate anyone who's stuck it out for all three and until next time, bye.